was for leaving, dumbass. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're getting sensual amongst the stars as we rank the romance options from across the Mass Effect trilogy. Quick note, we won't be including anyone from Mass Effect Andromeda and we'll only be including characters that qualify as actual romantic partners, as opposed to one-off flings, so the likes of Diana Allers, James Vega, Samara and Javik don't count. The mission's too important to let personal feelings interfere. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Number 12, Jacob Taylor. Look at this. Like sneaking into the captain's quarters. Don't pretend to be shocked that Jacob is bottom tier. Whatever potential this man had was squandered almost instantaneously. Being overshadowed by nearly every other character in terms of intrigue and likability would be one thing, but then he said the line. Heavy risk, but the prize. It was then that poor Mr. Taylor went from a generic party member all the way to meme material. If that had been it, maybe Jacob could have been remembered more fondly, but then he nuked any chance of that in Mass Effect 3. We can only imagine how furious the few remaining Jacob fans were when they found out he had canonically cheated on Shepard and was having a baby with another woman. Who is she to you? I... We, uh... Right. I get it. Number 11, Kelly Chambers. Shepard, it's really you. I could just hug you. It's good to see you too, Kelly. Barely qualifying as a romance, but a romance nonetheless, Kelly certainly got the short end of the stick. As a yeoman, she was a great wing woman who frequently informed Shepard of the mental, and often flirtatious state, of other companions aboard the Normandy. Playing your cards right could even bump the relationship beyond professional courtesy, all the way to getting a private dance in Shepard's quarters. I'm fine. I just... <sighs> can't step back onto the Normandy. I'm sorry. Spicy hip gyrations aside, pursuing Kelly as a romance becomes almost secondary as to keeping her alive. As the events of Mass Effect 2 and 3 ensue, unless you make the right decisions at the right times, Kelly will end up a casualty of war. There was a lot of untapped potential here, but sadly didn't measure up to much. If I hadn't changed my identity, I don't know what would have happened. Thank you. Number 10, Steve Cortez. I'm an only child. Lost my parents years ago. I had a husband back when I was stationed at Ferris Fields. The collectors took out the whole colony. Speaking of untapped potential, oh Steve, good old reliable Steve. Serving as the Normandy crew's secondary pilot, he's one of two new romances brought in at the tail end of the trilogy, as well as Mass Effect's first same-sex romance exclusive to male Shepard. Stay here with me, till the call comes. Of course. Not one moment for granted. The man is a teddy bear with a lot of love to give, but due to how he lost his husband to the Reapers, he's unsure about starting up something new. It's a very touching and understandably complex dynamic that unfortunately didn't get the development it deserved. Never. I'll be waiting for you. Just come back in one piece, okay? I will. Number 9, Caden Elenko. It's been a hell of a shakedown, Cruz. Our first mission ends with one Spectre killing another. The Citadel Council's not going to be happy about that. Ah yes, the blandest man in the galaxy. Mass Effect's very own punching bag until Jacob came along. At least, he used to be. Much like his female counterpart, Mass Effect 3 was where Caden was given time to shine. Finding inner peace with himself, wanting to rekindle a relationship with Shepard for the right reasons, being an active supporter and source of comfort, instead of being the jerk he was back in his Mass Effect 2 cameo, there's a lot of good to be found here. Maybe you're the one who's not thinking straight. You've changed, but I still know where my loyalties lie. I'm an Alliance soldier, always will be. Don't get us wrong, he doesn't have nearly the same amount of intrigue and pizzazz compared to his non-human love rivals. But at the very least, we can say that by the trilogy's end, Caden is way more than the whitest piece of bread in Earth space. We're ready. You've put the people together, the vision, and what you've done, Shepard, is build hope. Number 8, Ashley Williams. Much have I seen and known. Cities of men and manners, climates, councils, governments. Poetry. 
You gonna bore the enemy to death, Marine? Alongside Caden, Ashley was one of the primary love interests Shepard could woo back in the olden days of the first game. And much like Caden, she left a bit of a sour impression, given that she was very much anti-alien and not afraid to be vocal about it. She wasn't wholly irredeemable, but it was off-putting. You make me feel good enough. Bunk here tonight, Ash. With me. Bold word, Shepard. I like bold. Thankfully, Mass Effect 3 gave her plenty of time to mellow out and become a much more likeable character. One who couldn't only match Shepard as a soldier, but also as a partner. For those that stuck it out with Ashley, her final outing painted her in a hugely positive light. Not to mention a saucy one given the intensity of their bedroom scenes. You being here, with me, it means everything. Shepard. Shh. Number 7, Miranda Lawson. The mission's too important to let personal feelings interfere. But thank you, Commander. My sister is safe again thanks in large part to you. You better keep those wandering eyes in check, because this Ice Queen takes no prisoners. Essential in bringing back Shepard from the dead following their run-in with the Collectors, Miranda initially comes off as hostile, seeing Shepard as merely a tool to help Cerberus in their efforts to save humanity. I care about you, Miranda. And I think you care about me. This is no time for emotional entanglement. Thankfully, given time, effort, and a willingness to help her out in the darkest of moments, Miranda starts to thaw, open up, and show just how sultry the so-called perfect woman can be. She is much more than just eye candy, but she certainly doesn't hesitate to use what she's got. Now, if only she had been given a bigger role in the third game. The odds are against us, you know. Maybe. But I've got a good feeling about this. Number 6, Samantha Trainer. Commander, nice to see you again. Are you settling in, Trainer? I actually feel somewhat useful. Much like Cortez, Trainer only squeaked onto the Normandy for the final chapter of Mass Effect's story. So why is she so much higher? Because she's the bundle of sunshine we didn't know we needed. And then you fire me for fraternization! You kicked me off the ship with barely enough time to grab my toothbrush. As a human being, a confidant and comedic relief, Trainer is awesome, instantly endearing herself with her adorable traits. She's also one of the best romances for Femshep. A lover of showers, witty banter, and dreams of a white picket fence future together made it all too easy to fall for her. The fact she accomplished all of this with such limited exposure is a testament to how great a character she is. White picket fence and a dog, some kind of retriever. I'm thinking two kids, but are you writing this down? Number five, Thane Krios. Are you going to be all right till the end of the mission? I should be fine for another eight to 12 months. The more time I spend in human environments, the faster it progresses. This one hurts. As an assassin with deep spiritual ties and a lifetime of regrets, Thane was already a badass on arrival. So is it any wonder many a femshep fell for his charms? Unfortunately, this romance comes with one hell of a catch. Thane is essentially a dead man walking. And no matter what you do, by the time it comes to Mass Effect 3, he will pass on, leaving Shepard and the player heartbroken and alone. Such pleasant things from your lips. <coughs> Excuse me. Breathing is difficult. So, is it worth it? A brief yet beautiful bond with such an interesting character, only to lose him one game later with no chance of bringing him back? The choice is yours. Bye, Thane. Meet you across the sea. Number four, Jack. Talk to me, Jack. Why? I'm not interested in some dumb shit love affair. Never goes right. The psychotic biotic is vulgar, violent, and has a terrifying kill count to her name. And we love her for it. Experimented on her entire life, Jack is riddled with trauma, but as a result has become one of the strongest biotics out there, making her an invaluable member of the crew. Screw you, you don't know me. I've had enough. Fine with me. Right, you're too needy. That's not my thing. While initially treating the idea of intimacy and romance as contemptible, don't let that deter you. She's been waiting for someone who she feels she can finally lower her guard for. Ironically, playing Paragon and being patient with Jack leads to one of Mass Effect's most touching romances. So make sure to keep it in your pants until she's willing to take that all-important step, or you will cause her to close her heart forever. I was gonna burn off the N7 I got on my ass. But maybe I'll hang on to it for a while. Number 3, Garrus Vicarian. 
I really had to work at it. I am amazed that they teamed up to fight me. They must really hate me. To the fellas, Garrus is the ultimate space bro. Your ride or die companion who will always have your back, even when the galaxy is on the edge of oblivion. However, when it comes to the femsheps out there, prepare yourselves for a romance that is truly special, because Archangel over here is the full package. Going from a frustrated CSEC officer to a vengeful vigilante, Garrus's change in worldview allowed him to escape the friend zone in style, double downing on it in Mass Effect 3 as he continually proved himself to be the greatest boyfriend in the universe. There, there. It's okay. I know there are other things you're good at. He's got reach. He's got flexibility. He's got that voice. He can dance. And he will calibrate his way into your hearts. Garrus is the man. Uh, yeah, I hung out a lot of places last night. Your upper body, your lower body, pretty much all the parts in between. Torians certainly don't lack for a sense of direction. Number two, Talizora Vast Normandy. I haven't trusted anyone enough for that though, except, well, no Quarians. Um, you know what I mean. I appreciate the thought, Tally, and I feel the same way. You know you've fallen hard when you're willing to wage a war to win someone back a homeworld. But as any man of culture will tell you, Tally is totally worth it. Starting off as an eager young woman on her pilgrimage, by the time she returned in Mass Effect 2, she had proved herself a talented leader, though still burdened by the responsibility placed on her. I need to feel your skin against mine, to share myself with you before we fly off into the final battle. I'll find a way. Alongside the dynamics of Quarian politics and the civil war with the Geth, the biggest challenge facing a romance with Tally is her racist dependence on environ suits, as any exposure or intimate contact could potentially prove fatal. Navigating this, supporting her rise in station, and a million other adorable encounters cemented Tally as one of the most beautiful souls in the galaxy. Kila Salai. You said, I love you. And you said, Kila Salai. I'm. Number 1. Liara Tassoni What happens to your partner after the Union? Every relationship is different. Some unions are a single encounter with both parents parting ways afterwards. Others can be more long-term. In Mass Effect 1, Liara was an enthusiastic scientist that was easy on the eyes and easy to fall for. In Mass Effect 2's acclaimed DLC, she went on the darkest of arcs to become the new Shadow Broker, reigniting her passion for Shepard along the way. With the Shadow Broker's network, I can help you. Maybe I can turn this operation into something better. Don't be a stranger this time. Small chance of that. And finally, in Mass Effect 3, Liara's whole world comes tumbling down as the Reaper invasion forces her to accept some brutal truths about all she knew, and her place in it all the while standing alongside Shepard every step of the way. Liara is undoubtedly the most complete romance one can experience across the trilogy, where her triumphs and follies are seamlessly woven into her intimate scenes with Shepard. It's a journey you won't regret taking. I love you. Now, let's do what needs to be done. Which character do you consider Mass Effect's greatest love interest? Let us know in the comments. But I'll always want you in my life. No second thoughts? This is your chance to back out. No. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, there's more where that came from.